Hello friends, this video on hydrocarbons part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's understand the preparation of alkenes. How do you prepare alkenes? We prepare alkenes from alkynes, from alkyl halide, from vicinal dihalides. I'll tell you what is vicinal dihalide. From alcohol. So we typically use all these four mechanisms to prepare alkenes. Let's start from alkynes. So alkynes, if you see, if I add hydrogen to it, it becomes alkenes, right? Because alkynes are all the more unsaturated. So if I add hydrogen to it, it will become alkenes. But there's an issue. If I add hydrogen, this triple bond will break into double bond and double bond will also break into single bond, right? So what should we do? So we, we, we should not be able, uh, will not be able to use the platinum catalyst as we have used in the last example where we have just uh, you know, put in the platinum metals and it got hydrogenated. Can we use it? Yes, we can, but the quality will not be great, right? Sometimes we'll get double bond, sometimes triple bond, or you do the control platination, control dehydrogenation. So one option is you can do using Lindler catalyst. And alkene thus obtained in this has cis geometry similar to my dehydrogenation using the metal platinum so what is the Lindner's catalyst it is nothing but it is 5% palladium by weight you take 5% palladium by weight and this has a great property that only triple bond breaks there is a triple bond and convert to double bond but double bond will not be to, will not be converted to single bond using Lindner's catalyst this converts only triple to double bond and this catalyst is prepared by reduction of palladium chloride you take palladium chloride you reduce it you get this catalyst this has a large surface area the zero told it has a syn addition so you get cis geometrical alkenes correct this is one way to prepare alkene the other way is you have this alkyne you reduce with sodium in liquid ammonia and this forms trans alkene so in the previous case we saw that both the hydrogen get are on the same side because generally when you have this metallic surface kind of stuff right for example in the pt catalyst also you have this triple bond the hydrogen will be added on the same side same thing right but in this case it is a trans addition one hydrogen in this side another hydrogen from this side Correct. So this is my free radical type of reaction here. So here I use sodium. So the first step is to form free radical anion. So the reaction mechanism goes like this. The sodium metal reacts with this uh, alkynes to form anions, free radical anion, a carbon ion you can say. Right. For example, let's say I take this guy. So I have R, and then I have C, triple bond, C, R dash. Correct. The moment I give a sodium guy here, sodium free radical, this bond will break homolytically. Correct. The presence of sodium. So, what will happen is this guy, I'll show you. This, the next step is RC. The free radical here, there's a double bond, one bond is broken now. This guy will get, and in the meantime, sodium was a free radical, sodium will transfer its electron to this guy, sodium will become an A plus, and these electrons will come here, the negative charge. Correct. Now, I have a liquid ammonia. From liquid ammonia, this guy will attract hydrogen. Correct. So, this will become, on this, add liquid ammonia. So, what will happen is, this guy will give something like this. I have C, this double bond will be here. This is my R here. I have C, this is my R dash, right? So, on this, I will get hydrogen now. This from NS3. And Na, Na3 will become Na 
एन एच टू और एन एच टू एन करेक्ट बिकॉज ना दिस फ्रॉम एमोनिया आई गॉट हाइड्रोजन इन इन अटैच हेयर करेक्ट सो इट इज समथिंग लाइक दिस एन एच थ्री डॉट टू एन एच थ्री डॉट एन एच टू सो दिस सॉरी एच प्लस एन माइनस सो दिस एच प्लस अटैच हेयर एंड इट्स गॉट फॉर्म हेयर एंड आई गॉट एन एच टू एन करेक्ट नाउ ऑन दिस नाउ अगेन आई हैव सेकेंड सोडियम सेकेंड सोडियम आई एड सेकेंड सोडियम सेकेंड सोडियम रेडिकल फ्री रेडिकल दिस इज अगेन गिव इलेक्ट्रॉन टू दिस गाय सो दिस विल बिकम समथिंग लाइक दिस सी माइनस एंड अगेन आई एल एड एन एस थ्री टू इट सो दिस इज गिव द हाइड्रोजन टू दिस गाय and this nh2 minus will react with uh, gets nh plus actually with sodium so i'll get something like r dash this is h and here i'll get na so nh2 na this is what i will you see this is my trans alkenes okay so this is my reaction mechanism so i have my sodium free radical Because of sodium, and this will result in the homolytic fusion. So this will break actually, and now for this carbon, it will keep a negative charge. It will become positive itself, right? And then then this guy will attract one hydrogen, and whatever NH two minus it will have react with sodium to form this. Now again, one sodium free radical will give this guy the negative charge, right? Give electron to this guy. And now this carbon will again attract one hydrogen from its ammonia, and will form some ketones. So as we have discussed the preparation of alkene with the from alkyne using hydrogenation. Similarly, we'll do here also. Will you add the hydrogen in the presence of the catalyst? Same reaction we have. I have platinum uh, platinum catalyst. So I have my alkene here. Sorry, alkyne here. You add hydrogen to it. Using this catalyst, and you get alkene. One more reaction. I have this. This is my alkyne, ethyne. I got ethene. Propyne. I got propene. Now we'll talk about preparation of alkene using alkyl halides. So alkyl halides are mainly thing in this Rx form, maybe CH3x or CH2H5x of this form. when heat this with alcoholic potash that is potassium hydroxide and alcohol this takes out one halogen acid hx maybe hcl or shvia it takes out that acid from the alkyl halide to form alkene this is my final product and this reaction is called dehydrohalogenation because you are removing halogen acid dehydro because one hydrogen and one halogen is removed right so it's called dehydrohalogenation There is something called dehalogenation. It's different where you remove the halogen. Here it's called dehydrohalogenation because you remove hydrogen and halogen. Correct. So this is the example of beta elimination because you are removing no uh, hydrogen from the beta carbon atom. This is my carbon alpha carbon atom from which I have my uh, uh, what do you call halogen removed, and from the beta carbon atom hydrogen is removed. So it's called beta elimination. Correct because these two are removed and they are from two different carbons they are called beta elimination and they are next to each other and this is the the rate of reaction iodine is very fast bromine is less chlorine is less all the more less if we talk about the alkyl group tertiary is the max is the very fast then secondary and then primary we'll see the reaction mechanism here so in this case my alcoholic potash will give me what oh minus OH minus can react what? Can attack this guy. So let's put this OH minus here. Let's so attack this hydrogen. This hydrogen, what will do? It will break this bond and form this bond here. Now this carbon will have five bond now. This carbon will break this bond. Let me repeat once again. This OH minus will attack this hydrogen. Correct. It, the moment it attacks this hydrogen. This bond breaks and you form this bond, double bond. And since this carbon will have five bond now, this one bond will break because it's a good living group. This halogen is a good living group actually, and they'll come out, correct? Right? And thus, if you see, if you this, you will see you get this. 
the double bond. Correct. So if you see the whole reaction, you can draw this reaction. So in this whole reaction, there are two, dependent on two things. The first is the living group. It is very good living group. It will leave early. The moment I attack OH minus, this, this is used, right? And then what you form is, and thus this bond will break here, this will break here, and you get HX out, and you get something like this. Correct? Let's talk about alkene preparation from vicinal dihalides. So what are vicinal dihalides? So in which two halogens are attached in two adjacent carbon. They are called vicinal dihalides. For example, I have CC. You know this, I have some X, right? So this, they are called vicinal dihalides. So how to prepare alkene from this? You react this with zinc, loose metal. Right, zinc metal loose, it has to be loose, I'll tell you why. And you form Zn X2 and you'll get alkene. This is called dehalogenation. Please note the earlier process was dehydrohalogenation because you're removing hydrogen halogen. In this case, you're removing halogens only. It's called dehalogenation. Correct. Example, I have CH2Br, CH2Br, you react with zinc, you get ethene and zinc Br. Same thing, this reaction you get uh, Alkene. So it's propene here. Now we'll see the reaction mechanism. So I have, let's suppose this guy. Correct. I have some X here and some X here. Now let's suppose that we take bromine only here. Two bromine here. And I have a hydrogen, hydrogen. Correct. Now when you have this zinc guy here, zinc metal, and that's why I'm looking for the loose metals, I have a zinc surface here, zinc surface. So what will happen is, this zinc will form bond with these two halogens because Zn and X2 is a stable compound, right? So it will form bond with this and this will break up. Correct? So with this what will happen, it will form something like this. This bond is broken, it will be a double bond here, right? And I have Zinc Br in this surface or any X chlorine or iodine, and you get this guy now. This is my ethene, correct? So, just opposite of hydrogenation using the uh, metal catalyst here, you use the metal, and this metal absorbs this halogens and forms ZnBr2, and you get this ethene here. So now we prepare alkenes from alcohols by acidic dehydration. So the concept is pretty simple actually. If you see any alcohol that is ROH, so in this case OH is a poor leaving group. It's a poor leaving group. But if you add H plus to it, if you add H plus to it, if you acidify it, it becomes ROH2 plus. In this case, this guy is a Good leaving group. And that's what we do actually in this case. So if you see alcohols on eating with sulfuric acid forms alkenes with elimination of one water molecule. So this is one water molecule. If you see, this is eliminated. This is the reaction we have. This is my alcohol. When you heat with sulfuric acid concentrated, you get ethene here and this is called dehydration acidic dehydration of alcohol because in this case you're removing water molecule right hydrogen and OH correct this is called acidic dehydration of alcohol and this reaction is also called beta elimination because if you see hydrogen and oxygen OH is uh, removed from two different carbons and they are nearby right this is called beta elimination please note why we use sulfuric acid and why we don't use mineral acid, for example, HCl, HBr, HI, why? Because if we use these, what happens is, the moment OH minus is 
remove the first thing is that we remove that then this cl minus or br minus and i minus can attack so in that case it will be a substitution reaction right so you remove oh minus and your cl minus will come and attack this position and this will be a substitution reaction but if you use h2so4 so if you see it breaks and it forms h plus and hso4 minus correct or if you use s3po4 it gives h plus and h2po4 minus so these ions are very big and they are not good nucleophile you can use s3po4 also so this becomes h these are very big and they are not good nucleophile they are not good nucleophile so they won't attack right and thus you will be able to dehydrate this correct so if you see the reaction here what happens is for example i have this guy right so i have co oh and other carbon you can put here let me put here right the moment you add h plus so this guy comes here and you get r this you get oh2 here so right the same thing i told roh2 plus correct so you will get something like this and this guy is a good leaving group so this guy will leave the whole thing will leave and you will get something like this h h and plus correct now if i had used scl br h br or h i then the chlorine cl minus in this solution would have attacked it but since i am using h2so4 and which has got given h plus and h is poor minus so h is poor minus is a poor nucleophile right so it won't attack so what will happen is in this case this guy will break and form a bond the h plus will come here and will form a bond so this guy will break and this will go here so you will get Correct. So this is the even mechanism. So in this case, the third degree alcohol will react more fast because this plus you get right the carbocations. The third degree is more stable, so this will be more fast. This is a slow process actually. But if it is a three degree cation, it will be all the more fast because three degree cation is more stable. Two degree is less stable. Correct. So. 3 degree cation is more fast it happens fast and needs less temperature but if you have 2 degree or 1 degree uh, carbon right in that case the 2 degree and 3 degree cation is carbocation is not as stable so you need higher temperature so the reactivity series will be 3 degree has more reactive 2 degree is less and 1 degree is all the less okay. so if you know the reaction mechanism you can tell actually why HCl, which why HI, why HBr is not used, why only H2SO4 is used, or why H3PO4 is used, right? Because this gives very weak nucleophile. And what is the order? So if you have 3 degree or 2 degree or 1 degree or call, which one will react fast? So if you know the reaction, you know that this carbocation is formed, this reaction in, uh, mechanism is intermediate. So the more stable uh, the carbocation, the faster will be the reaction. Correct? Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.